welcome you to yes, another Good I Life am. program. Now, we have got a whole studio <laughs> full just for you. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. We have Philip Cameron with us today. And we, <laughs> and we love to have Philip Cameron with us and Stella's voice. Too many voice. years. As long as dirt. <laughs> 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 I have been here, my Lord, and, and, and just to watch how this whole ministry has grown has just been an amazing thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and watch you, you've added this and added this and gone on the network. It's just it's amazing how God uses Everything starts out so small and, and, yeah. and unimportant. You know, if a fox's tail brush against the wall, it's going to fall down, you know. What is this among so many? But God specializes yes. in taking loaves and fishes. He's a loaves and fishes kind of God. Yes, and yes. Um, Say that again. He's a loaves and fishes kind of God. You said that for yourself. <laughs> yes, that is true. I, I remind myself on a daily basis that he is a loaves and fishes kind of God. That little boy. When he left home that morning with his little bag of loaves and fishes, he had no idea that he was carrying with him the seeds of countless Bible schools and churches and orphanages and ministries. He had no idea that what he was taking with him was going to be an inspiration for thousands of years. That if you give what you have to God, he'll multiply it. And how many millions of times has that message multiply this offering like you did the loaves and fishes and that's what God does and God takes what you have if you're waiting for if you're waiting to be big time before you like God use you you're going to die before you go, <laughs> before God gets a chance to use you but if you start where you are and are faithful where you are God adds the increase to amen. it amen yes he does that's all he wants is faithful <laughs> people I'm not smart, but I am faithful. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. You are. That's uh, true. You know, we drove through those Carpathian mountains. Yes, we did. This, I've got to tell the story again. Um, Bob DeAndre flew to Romania, or, or no, it was, it was um, Germany or somewhere. Germany, yeah. And I picked him up, and we drove through Romania, and they, they left his, they lost his baggage. He, he had no suitcase. And he had this thin, leaving this climate to go to Moldova in January is not a smart thing. <laughs> and it was a thin, silk, short-sleeved shirt. And uh, that was all he had. And I drove with this man across the Carpathian Mountains in blizzards. To and go him, to an orphanage. To go to an orphanage. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, yeah, you're going to be cold today, brother. You are going <laughs> to be a cold man today. And we crossed, well, that was quite a journey, wasn't it? Oh, that was I a journey. I, I proved I could drive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you'd close your eyes and drive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the Carpathian Mountains is, is separates Romania from Moldova. And it's literally just hairpin bins. And uh, when I first went there, there was, no, there was no barricades and no snow plows and no salt or anything. And it was just a, it was just a, plead the blood of Jesus all the way across the mountains mm. to get to where you're going. Well, when I read yes. that in the book, <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> yes, that, that didn't make the book. Yeah. That didn't make the book. It's crazy. Well, you've got some video and pictures ready. Yeah, we, we, we've got some, you just for those that are watching and you, you say, what is Stella's voice? Um, I was sitting in my house in Montgomery, Alabama. I was 37. I came to TV shows and to telethons and preached on Sundays and sold books and CDs and stuff and lived in a very nice house with a nice car and a swimming pool in the backyard. And all the dreams I had when I was a young boy in Scotland, I checked off. I'd done it all at 37. And um, the phone rang one day, and it was my dad, Simon Cameron. He's been here as well. And, and he, I picked up the phone, I said, hello. And he says, there are babies dying. And I says, what are you talking about? It's like, I says, what? He says, do you understand that our babies dying? And what he was watching was the, the kids in Romania when the revolution took place there, when the Berlin Wall fell, all that crazy stuff happened. He was watching these children in orphanages. Now, I had never been in an orphanage, never thought of an orphanage. That was other people's job, other people's responsibilities. I did, I wrote books about household salvation and sang praise music, and that was what I did. That was my world. And, um, and he, he says, what are you going to do about it? 
And I says, I'll send the Red Cross an offering. <laughs> and uh, I kind of said, look, he was recovering from cancer surgery. I said, look, I said, look, don't get, don't, up, don't get yourself upset. I hadn't heard back if, he, if he'd had the cancer had spread. And um, the next night, I kind of fobbed him off that night. The next night, the phone rang again. There are babies dying. I said, Simon, stop it, man. You're driving me nuts here. Well, he would not be put off. And at the end of the week, he said, I can't sit here. And I mean, he had a wound in his back. And, and, and every time he moved, it, it burst. It turned septic and it burst. And every time it, it twisted, it opened more. And um, so we were concerned. He had a brace on and a nurse came every day and dressed this thing for him. And, and I'm saying, Dad, don't get yourself upset. And so one day he called up and he got more and more aggravated at me during the week. And he, and he said, well, if you won't go, I'll go by myself. And if I die on the way, it is your fault. And I said, oh, <laughs> behave yourself, man. And uh, went, went to Romania and, and it changed my life forever. Walked in an orphanage. Well, I didn't walk in the orphanage the first day. I just said, I'm not going in. I walked up to the front door, opened the doors and the smell of, you, you've been in this orphanage, the smell of human waste. I dropped the box of powdered milk I was carrying, ran out back to the van. I'm gagging, literally, on the hood of this vehicle. And I'm thinking, oh my Lord. And he came out and he says, get in. I says, no, 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 no. You want to go to an orphanage? Here you are. There's the door. Off you go. I'll wait for you. He says, don't you offend these people. Get in there. I says, no, I'm not going. I says, if I stay out here, I'm innocent. If I go in those doors, I am guilty. And he grabbed me. He says, well, you're going to have to be guilty. And he pulled me into the doors. And unknowing, pulled me into my destiny. And sometimes God's going to use a circumstance to pull you into your destiny. And I was there for a number of years. And uh, in Scotland, we built a warehouse. We had four trucks running back and forth. And I literally changed my whole life to, to support the food and stuff. And you guys helped us with a truck. You guys are part of this historically here at CTN. And uh, I, I, I thought, well, wow, I'm, aren't I doing well? And uh, it was Christmas time. We give away thousands of Christmas presents. And he called me up one day and he says, I don't need to stay in, in Romania. I want you to go to Moldova. I says, where in the name of heavens is Moldova? He says, it's not far away. I'm looking at it in the map right now. He says, it's just one more country over. And, uh, and uh, it was over the Carpathian Mountains. And I almost died the first time I went, and I almost killed you the second <laughs> time I went. And just I discovered in that country horrendous circumstances. And can I just yeah. intervene here a minute? Because Philip and I, we've never shared this on the air, but... We knew each other a oh, long time ago. Time, Our yeah. kids, you know, were in the same youth group. Yeah. And you showed a video to our church of that, that, that trip to correct. Moldova. And I don't think there was a dry eye in there. I, I mean, I just think about it. And even what I read in the book in the last few days, and I just thought, you can't even imagine the yeah. children. And I didn't know this about the children sitting on coffee cans, coffee cans yeah. that were cut they, and they their bottoms blanket, were. They put a blanket on the ground and line coffee cans up, big coffee cans, and that was, a, that was the baby's potties. And all of them had cuts, rings, cut into the bottoms, raw, from sitting on the coffee can. They would just leave them for an hour, two hours. And um, I, I mean, I, I yeah, can tell you some stuff. It's just unbelievable. That would make you want to throw up. And uh, that first time when I went there, I came back from Moldova, and Chrissy picked me up at the airport in Atlanta, and I was, I was distraught. I was out of my mind. The mess. I found this. I found this orphanage of girls, of handicapped girls, 200 of them in a town called Hinches, Moldova, and it was like it was like walking into hell. It was. There it was, was no like toilets it. in the place, and all around the walls was where they'd gone to the bathroom, and there was not a light bulb in the whole place. So when it was dark at three in the afternoon, it went dark in the orphanage. It was. It was. It, it was like Dante's hell I walked into. And I'm sitting thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And my dad had sent me here. I went and walked in glib. I'm going to see what, you know, bring a report back to him kind of thing. And I walked on this place and I'm, and, and it was so, and they, they took me to the rooms. It was handicapped kids and every room was like just horrendous stuff. Babies with heads, you know, water head, you know, I, I don't really call the proper name for it. Just bed sores. Oh. 
and I'm walking around the place thinking, don't touch them, don't touch them. Pretend this is a video, the smell, and I'm thinking, please God, just let me get out of here, let me get out of here, please God, let me get out of here, please God. And, uh, <clears throat> and I said to the guy, I said, we've got to go, we've got to, we've really got to go. And uh, he says, we want to sing for you before you go. And I thought, oh God. More, and I didn't think it was a song, I just thought the time, I'm like, oh, jeez. Okay, so we sat down in this room, and I, I guess 20% of the windows were broken in the place, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, please, just get this over. So a guy showed up with a wheezy old accordion, and then they started, day, 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 day. I'm sure the kids recognized the song, and they all sang this Romanian song, and, 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 and the Spirit of God's telling me, tell him I love him, tell him I love him. And I'm embarrassed. I was embarrassed to tell them that God loved them. Because how can you tell me loves them living in this hell? How does that, that's not a, that's not a loving God. And I'm saying, oh God, how do I do this? And the guy that, at the accordion saw it over and I says, you pump and I'll play. And I sang, yes, Jesus loves me. And I tried to translate it into Romanian. It's pretty simple, I guess. And it was like a stunned silence in this room for about five, 10 seconds. And the guys started playing, and they all started singing, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Wow. And I'm standing going, oh, God. And the Spirit of God said, well, if you won't touch them, I will touch you, and I will make them touch you. And I left that place with my head inside out. I said, how much money do I have to get back to the airport? And um, they told me, and I, I took all that money, and I, 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 we got this guy up at night. It was, it was dark. It was a flashlight. And he stuck glue and stuck glass on the holes to try to stop the, the, the thing. And I flew home, and, and my mind, I was out of my mind. I was, I was completely nuts. I didn't know what to do. And Chrissy picked me up at the airport, and she said to me, she says, um, I've got the boys a, 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 some kind of PlayStation or whatever it was. And I, I'd asked the director of the orphanage, I said, how, many, how much money does it cost to heat this place? And it was $200 a day. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, okay, $200 a day. So Chrissy, she says, I've just bought this boys. I says, how much? She says, oh, y Yvonne, Brian, who, who, who works, his wife worked in Sears, and she got one and kept it from us, kept it for us. And she's all excited because we got this kids the, 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 the gift of all Christmas gifts. And I says, how much does it cost? She says, $200. I says, don't you understand that you may have killed children? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you imagine... We had no, I mean, Christmas that year was, uh, the lights were obnoxious. We, I, I, I went to, to Christmas, the Christmas service in Evangel Temple and, dis, and just ruined everyone's Christmas because I'm thinking, how frivolous is this that we are sitting here glibly singing these songs and there are kids on an airplane away dying. Don't you understand? So I kind of spoiled everyone's Christmas that year. You know, until we saw that video, no, none of us no could knew, imagine. No, I didn't know. You, I didn't know. you couldn't even imagine anything no. like that. And I was back. I was back in Moldova the first week of December, and um, I happened. I didn't realize it then, but they have a Christmas, the Orthodox Christmas, and. Um, I showed up with coal. They, they said, they said you won't get coal on Christmas Day. I said, I bet I will. I said, just tell the guy, I'll give him 50 bucks, he will come and deliver it. And a truck showed up right fast with a, with a load of coal. And uh, so I'm thinking, yay, I'm the hero of the day. And we, I says, dump the coal in, and I'm shoveling the stuff into this boilers. And I said to the director, we have heat. Let the children out and play, because there were a couple kids out, and they had a tubular chair, and they're using it as a sleigh down the hill. And I says, let the children out. And he laughed. He says, they have no shoes. Ah. Uh, well, we have pictures. You know, and uh, so that, that's, that's, where I, that's how I got to where I'm at right now. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, I discovered at 16, a girl's put on the street, and human traffickers get them. And I started Stella's house. There's a handicapped girl called Stella in that orphanage. And uh, that's where Stella's voice came from. So oh, wow. I, I don't even know what pictures we have at the moment. Well, I but think I want to show the video first. Okay, sure. video and pictures. Well, let me set up the video, if, yeah. if you don't mind. Um, yeah. We have built Stella's houses. And the kids come to us. And when they're, six, when they're 16, they're put on the street by the orphanage. And they've been going to, in Stella's house, they go to school. 
But some of the older girls, now that they're finishing university, the government will make us put them back out in the streets. And there's no employment in this country. It's under Putin, uh, all the shadow that you've, you've heard the news. And um, last week, something happened that has blown my mind and has made me take a crazy step of faith. And uh, I think this video will tell you about it. All right. They are orphans in a country that's like an orphan itself. Moldova is smaller than Maryland, the single most poverty-ridden nation in all of Europe, a land where alcoholism is a national curse, where the government is at stalemate. Across the border in Ukraine, Putin's armies march, threatening to take this nation back into bondage. Moldova, they warn, is next. He wants to restore uh, that uh, Russian empire. That's why I worry about Moldova, particularly since they're not a member of NATO. And I think he is calculating how much he can get away with, just as Adolf Hitler calculated. Who will stop the unrelenting power of the enemy? Our God will. Here in Moldova, he sees the hearts of the orphan, who have been brought to him by the ministry of Stella's voice. He hears the prayers of the innocent, the broken. Home to 50 orphan girls who were targeted by sex traffickers, Stella's voice gave birth to what may be the world's only orphan's church. There, they minister to one another, they worship the Almighty King, then bring the parents that once abandoned them, the fellow students that once mocked them, and they lead them to Christ. Last year, these orphans traveled the US asking for a miracle to double the capacity and outreach by building Stella's house three and four. And the crowning victory, Speranza, their very own new church. But just as the enemy is threatening the nation of Moldova, an enemy is also threatening right next door to Stella's house, the home to 50 orphans and the new homes for 60 more. Our next door neighbor filled with rage and disgust for the orphans angry with what God was doing, single-handedly has halted the construction of our work over and over again. Daily, from this balcony, she ranted at her girls, calling them whores and much worse. Endlessly, her lawyer filed papers to stop us, delaying us time and time again. Like Putin on the border, she had weapons that we couldn't withstand, or so it looked like in the natural. But God can turn opposition into opportunity. On May 16th, she made an offer we never anticipated. If you buy my house, all this trouble will go away. Her price was incredibly fair. The extra space would be a godsend, but she only gave us 90 days. At the end of this tour, many of the girls you see here will have to move out of Stella's house. Their education is over and the government once more says that they must go. But God said, these are my kids. Many of the girls have asked me, what will happen to us once we finish university and must leave? You see, outside of Stella's house, many still think of us as orphans. How can I not buy this house? How can I not stop the threat on our border? How can I not raise up more orphans to be evangelists while I still can? You have the power to make this miracle happen. What the devil meant to oppose us, God has turned into an opportunity. Opportunity House. Your gift, your prayers, can and will make this miracle happen. What the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. Help us turn this crisis into a miracle that will change lives forever. That is why God brought us here today. He's talking about a miracle of miracles, a lady that cursed them daily. 
is now about to bless them. And they only can help as you help. Okay. It's the only way this miracle will happen. And what will it do to the kids? Oh, it, it, it changes the whole paradigm of what we do. It allows the older girls a place to go and start industry. In fact, today, before the program, I've been meeting with two, two businessmen here in Florida that are helping us establish businesses in, it's called Opportunity House. And so the girls will have a chance to create business and become self-supporting, and then, and then we can hire other, other, other kids as they grow. What that does is, by taking the girls that are in Stella's house that have got to leave and moving them next door, we have girls who are put on the streets in June, and they're asking to come in, but there's no spaces because Stella's houses are full. So by moving the girls to Opportunity House, it opens up new beds, more beds, to take the new girls in. So we're literally saving lives twice with the same action. And uh, so the, the lady asked, the, she, this woman, I mean, you've never heard such hatred f from her. And the builders came and complained to me how she was talking to the, the unsaved construction workers. And uh, she was just, she was, it was just horrendous. She just do doesn't want to be next to orphans. And so she, she offered the house to us just two weeks ago. And um, the, it was less than what it was appraised for by 15,000 euros, about 20,000, $22,000. And so we, we've sent 30,000 over last week. And uh, we have got to find the rest. So for the next 10 weeks, we'll be traveling and believing God for a miracle. If we can get the money sooner rather than later, and God provides it, if we, if we don't get the money, we can't take the new kids in because we need the, old, the, the, the senior girls to stay in Stella's house. If, we, if God can meet this need, then we can m move the seniors into Opportunity House and then have space for the new kids to come in. And uh, so I'm just asking every one of you that are watching that you have the power of life and death in your hand. You can pray and believe God with us for this miracle. It's about $400,000 we're going to find in the next 90 days. And um, everything we've ever done has been a miracle, and I don't see this one being any different. But it takes folks' obedience. It takes folks saying yes to him. Yes. Yeah. So we should use your prayers. You're just talking about 400 people yeah. giving $1,000? 400 people. Wow. Bob, 400. Yeah. If 400 people could look yeah. and say, I will give 20 more girls life and hope. If I were to take you there and stand you outside that house, and say, I could buy this whole thing for $1,000. And I can save all of these lives. That's, that's the pictures of it right there. I, I, I can, and hold that picture there for a second. If you look at the right-hand side, there's a separate building. You see how it's different from the house? Yeah. Yeah. There's a garage downstairs and an apartment upstairs. And that is where we'll turn into a shop or, or whatever we need to do as far as the industry part of the house. So it's not, it, it'll be separate from the house where the girls are living. But if I were to take you to that gate and say, look, we can save 20 more girls for $1,000. There isn't one person that wouldn't think, wow, I can do that. If, <coughs> if 400 people think that thought, this thing comes out of the future into the present. The 1st of June is when they let all these kids go from the, from the orphanages. Dasha sitting here wanted to, kill, in fact, try to kill herself because there was no hope after 16. No, no reason to live because no one wants them, nowhere to go. And you remember the story, you can see how close, the, the church is the, is the building with the big windows. And the, so Stella's four is up the hill and that's, that's already been stuccoed. And then to the, down below is the church, which will seat over 300 kids. And then to the left, you see the three windows of Stella's three. And I got pictures this morning from Moldova because, this, because we've agreed to buy this woman's house, she has stopped the lawsuits and they've started working again. So I got an excited picture today from Sugar, one of her head girls, and she said, Dad, the roof is going on today in Stella's three. So 
this is like a blockage. It's the, it's the, it's the dam that God, the devil's been using to stop us. And if we can get this, it literally opens up. It gives us five girls' homes and just in, in, a, in a turnover of a miracle. And if we can do that, I mean, it just it expands what we're doing into a different dimension yet again. And as I said, if I could, if I could stand with you and say we could do this, all for a thousand dollars. I know that there's there's hundreds of you who say, well, I can do that, and um, we, I'm just glad I can come and talk to my friend. And what's amazing, Mr. DeAndre has been part of this miracle since the very beginning, and um, the very first night when I was sitting in, Mold Roman in Moldova, uh, sorry, Romania, trying to get my son Andrew adopted, um, Bob, in the middle of a telethon, called me on the air in the middle of the night in Moldova. And God spoke to him. And he says, for the next little while, whatever you give, we're going we're to give it to Philip. And uh, that was the beginning of what we do. So it's your fault, Bob DeAndre. <laughs> so I've, I've come here to pre present you with a bill for opportunity. <laughs> you pushed me off this cliff. OK, fine. Now what are you going to do about it? Well. <laughs> I'm going to give at least a thousand dollars. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you, by talking, by allowing me to come, and sit here and blather on about this thing, because it's what I live for. Um, that's a that's tremendous, and thank you for that opportunity. And you know, this ought to touch the heart of every single person watching. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, if you could see the video that we saw. <laughs> The big difference. I said it? there was not a dry eye in there, and I meant that. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for us to realize in America that people actually live like yeah. that. But, you know, we need to go to a break. We have another video. This is a human video. You may have heard of uh, Lloyd Ziegler from Master's Commission. He went to Moldova and taught them this human video. I think you'll be blessed by it. I went from hopeless to giving hope. Alone and now adopted. I am accepted and no longer rejected. Lost, now found. Freedom from being bound. I have a life that makes the most to fully count. Look at somebody and tell them, I need you. I need you. Thank you. 
To contact the Stella's Voice Ministry Office, please call 334-288-1188 or send an email to connecting at stellasvoice.org. You can send a donation to Stella's Voice, P.O. Box 241-241, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. 
Stella's Voice can also be found online at www.stellasvoice.org and on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. The Christian Television Network is all about proclaiming the gospel. All over the world. It's about connecting you with your local community. It's about family and everything that affects the home. CTN is about keeping you fit in spirit, soul, and body. CTN is about bringing you exciting guests who are making a difference in the kingdom. At CTN, we're about being here for you anytime, day or night. The need to survive. They have a need to survive just like you do. You need to survive and they need to survive. Right. Only the odds against them surviving yeah. is a thousand times what your need is. And you have to do something about it. Absolutely. That. Well, that song, I Need You to Survive, just to me, it's them talking directly to our hearts saying, you know, we can't do this by ourselves. And uh, the, the miracle of it is that, that as we've grown over the years now, they started their own church over two years ago. They've led over 200 folk to Jesus. Oh, praise God. Last month they did an outreach in Kishnau, the capital. Um, every month, is, what do you call it? Just like a cafe? What, what's it? Esperanza Cafe. Esperanza Cafe. Hope. <laughs> Esperanza means hope in Moldovan, so Esperanza Cafe. So they contacted me and they said, Dad, we want to do one in the city of Kishnau. I said, no, no, we can do this. And they rented this room and put out tables. Did you hire the tables or what did, how did you, or the Yeah, we hired the room and then there was tables there and everything else. So, I mean, they, they wear bow ties. It's, it's, a, it's a whole thing that they've on. And um, uh, like 130 kids came. Wow. wow. And they presented the gospel. I mean, so out, out of what everyone else said, these kids are nothing, will never be anything. They all speak English. They're growing in God tremendously. They've got this church growing. They do their own Bible studies, their own praise and worship. And um, there is a pastor in the church, and, and every time I talk to them, I'll just say, look, let, them, let the girls, let the guys do it. They can do it. Don't, don't get in the way. Don't get in the way. And um, they, they, they are turning into men and women of God. They want to go to Bible school, so we're opening the Bible school again in Scotland that we started 40 years ago. And um, it's, it's all, it's just getting, it just gets bigger and bigger every day. And you're thinking, Lord, I hope you do know where I am. Please, Lord, you know. And uh, so it's just, it's just wonderful to see the hand of God. And, and if you could be a part of Opportunity House, I know God will bless you. Let me tell you who I've got with me. This wonderful girl, is that what you told me to say? <laughs> I'll pay you later. She'll pay me later. <laughs> this is Nadia. And uh, next to her is Dasha. Now, these two, believe it or not, Blondie and, 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 and the dark hair are cousins. They ha their moms are sisters. And um, Andre, on the other side of the studio, way over there, that handsome young man, he comes from Simon's house, and his mother is also a sister of, so there's three sisters. Andre's mom is one sister, Nadia's mom is one sister, Dash's mom, and then Dash has got a sister called Sylvia. And um, their mothers, one, Andrew's mom died in a, in a car wreck, and um, Nad's mom left them, just abandoned them. And then and Dash's mom kept them a while, and then she left them, and left with, a, with an uncle whose wife told them every day what they were without having a father, if you know the word, that, what the word it is. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she just badgered her husband, and, and, and eventually he put them in the orphanage. And uh, so that's whole, there's four of them. Um, over on my farthest right is... Please tell. Did I? Oh. Look, tell what she's accomplished. Well, Dasha is now a... If you have a microphone, Dasha, can you speak at all? Yes. <laughs> where, where are you a student at? I'm a student at Auburn University, Montgomery. She is a student in our second year of Auburn University, Montgomery. And what... The other day we came in, Andre and she and I were out somewhere. We came in, there's an envelope on the butcher block in our house, and I says, that's for you, Dasha. I said, they're kicking out of Auburn. They're, th <laughs> they're showing the door. So she could hardly open the thing. She was so scared. 
weren't you? I was scared. I was already thinking, what did I do now? <laughs> and what, and what, ha what was inside the envelope? It was a letter from uh, AUM saying, congratulating me for making the dean's list this semester. Oh, she made the dean's Wonderful. list. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So that's a Romanian-speaking girl doing s studies in America. She, she, took, she made a big mistake this year, and she took a, a English literature. And um, I heard more Shakespeare than I ever want to hear Shakespeare. Dad, what does this mean? And I'm a Scotsman for crying out loud. I can hardly speak English, never mind read William Shakespeare. And this is a sonnet that's 300 chapters long. I'm thinking, oh, dear Lord. And I'm thinking, you know, so I made the dean's list this year at Auburn <laughs> University. I should get the letter, not, not her. Anyway, furthest over, what's your name, my darling? My name is Irina. And are you alone in Stella's house, or do you have a... No, I have a sister and a brother. A sister in, she's a sister in Stella's house and a, a brother in Simon's house. So another whole family saved. And this, pass the microphone over to our, she's, these are the little ones that are new to us. And your name is? Nicoletta. Nicoletta. And um, the, the last time, let me tell you how powerful what this we're doing. The last time we were here sitting on this chair, Nicoletta, Nicoletta had never heard the gospel and was in an orphanage. And because people gave and cared and support, today she's here, she is learning English like crazy. Every time they don't speak English, they've got a, a game going on. If they speak Romanian, they've got to do two press-ups for every word in Romanian they speak. <laughs> so yesterday, driving here, she was doing press-ups in the bus because <laughs> she had a whole, a whole phrase in, in Romanian. They're called push-ups. What, what's this? No. Is this English <laughs> literature I'm doing just now? The, the press-ups. What's wrong with you, Bob DeAndre? Uh, I, look, I can stay home and, and get a... I don't know if I come here and get you to be, mean, to be mean to me. Anyway, on the back, as you saw, I talked to you with Andre. What's your name? Hello, my name's Christina. And you are alone in Stella's house? Or no, you're I have one more sister. Uh, her name is Aurika. Aurika. And you're studying right now? Yeah, I'm studying business and management. Business management, isn't that clever? And next to you is? My name is Angela. Angela. And how long have you, you, you is your first year in Stella's house, correct? Yes. And already learning to speak English. Yep. And she has the most infectious laugh <laughs> all the time. You just hear, you, you can tell where Angela is all the time by the laugh that she has. <laughs> and on the far end, what's your name? My name is Andre. And how does it feel to have all these sisters, Andre? It's um, it's good. A little <laughs> bit hard if they start to speak, but Andre I'm, a speak Christian, a I'm a Christian uh, <laughs> boy, and I can't <laughs> resist. When when Andre was he was lost, he was lost, and uh, Dash and Nadia said to me, Dad, we we got a cousin, we got to find him, we got to help him, and they there was God used them to nag me into um, turning the first Stella's house into Simon's house. And uh, so he is one of, of 15 boys we have there now. And uh, we, we could, if, we, if we had the space, we could have another 50. It's just all down to the space. Mm. So it's exciting. Yes. There's probably somebody watching right now that could help you accomplish that. A little, a little boy one day was praying for, for a, a loaf of bread, and this rich, he was begging. And th this rich man walked past and said, um, do you believe in God, son? And the wee boy says, yes, sir, I do. He said, well, if you believe in God, how come you're begging and you're looking for a, a, some bread? He said, don't you think God could feed you? And the little boy says, I believe God has spoken to many folk to feed me. They just haven't responded. Mm. That's good. I'm sure that's the truth. And yeah. um, I know, as sure as I'm sitting on this sofa, there's enough people watching this the program right now across this great country that could say we can make this, we can make Opportunity House an event um, and a new Simon's House as well, just as quick, yeah. yeah. Well, we have a graphic on a book. Yes. Your first book? No, 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 my fifth, I believe. The Household Salvation that's book that I wrote. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, there's 300,000 of those in print. That was a, if, if this one does as good as that one, I'll be a very happy man. <laughs> but um, this book is the story of, of what we've done. 
And um, when I went to Kapkui, the first orphanage where Constanza comes from and, and those kids, an arena, um, they, one day they came to me and they says, um, what do your children call you and Chrissy? And I said, well, they call Chrissy mom and they call me dad and they talk real fast. And they says, we can call you dad. So that's why the book was called They Call Me Dad. Mm -hmm. And it's the story of, of a, 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 a guy that fell by mistake into a situation and couldn't, couldn't escape. And I guess I've made every mistake in the book on the way here, but I'm here. And uh, there's a lot of lives that have been saved and touched and changed. And out of those lives, multitudes will be changed and saved and touched. And um, it's just, it's, it's the fumbling miracles of God. It is. That you, it walk, is. <laughs> that you walk around in the dark and you bump into stuff and you fall down and you pick yourself up. And uh, the key is picking yourself up again. The key is standing up. And when there's no, nothing to, no reference point in your life, nothing to hold on to, get up and stand and say, well, I guess I'll, I'll wait and I'll stand until I can move again. And uh, this last year has been the toughest of my life. I've, I've gone through battles that I didn't even know would ever exist. And uh, he's faithful. Amen. I want to say this about that book, too. I couldn't put it down. <laughs> Bob could tell you. I said, I, this is one of the best books. So if you like to read, it is... It's just the kind of book you cannot put down, and it builds your faith up because it is loaded with one miracle after another. I'm doing, I'm doing radio just now. Uh, this morning, I did, before I got here, I did an hour of radio. And um, the, fu the funny thing is that this is what they tell me all the time. All oh, we get books all the time, and we, we, we don't even get a chance to read them. But I happened to open this book, and I haven't for two days. I've been trying to get this thing finished. It's driving me crazy to get this book finished. It it's has so it, it, it has that adventure in it. It does. And the crazy thing is, I told my story, and um, and, and I haven't read the book myself, to be quite honest <laughs> with you, because I can't go back and I can't. It's yeah. it's too much of an up and down roller coaster. And, and I said, well. It is what it is, mountains and, 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 um, and victories and <laughs> long nights of, of wondering what day it is. And victories. And victories. And the crazy victories. thing is this, no matter how far you start behind, no matter how deep and dark your day is, if you're faithful, you will end up in victory. God has a way of getting yes. you to where he wants you to be. And let me encourage you today. You might be in the, in the deepest, darkest day of your life, fighting everything that you know, and, and you have no clue as to where to step forward. God wants you to know something. If you're faithful, He will make a way where there is no way. And um, that is the story of Stella's voice. And uh, you, you, if you want, you can go to our website. It's stellasvoice.org. And... Uh, or, or you can go to Amazon, it's a Kindle. Kindle, is that you call them? Uh -huh. When you can download them into your reader. Yeah. And, or you can go to your book, Christian bookshop and ask for it. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. Yeah. Tell us one of the miracles in the book. <sighs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I can't even, I can't even, the, the, the comes so, so fast. Tell me a miracle in the book. Well, when I adopted Andrew, for example, I, we talked about this this morning, yes. um, I was in Budapest, Bucharest with him. Uh, I, I managed to get him a, a, a passport. And, and I was in this girl's house that had ripped us off, taking all our money away from us. And um, we're staying in our house and, and uh, there was no gas in the city, in the whole city. And I'd send Vera, the guy that works for me, to, to sit in his car all night, on my, in my car, waiting for gas. And um, I, I managed to, in those days there's no phones, so you go to the post office and they'd let you talk from the post office and you buy three minutes of time or whatever. And I called American Brian Patterson, who's worked with me for 40 years, said to me, he says, y you understand that we, we, won't, we won't survive this with you not traveling, the money stopped and we are, we are in, we're about to fail. And I said, to, I said to Chris, as you understand, if we stay here, we'll lose the ministry, we'll lose our house. And she says, we have no choice. And um, 
So I got, I managed, I had to go to Bucharest to try and get his passport, and I got his passport. And I was trying to get a visa to get him out of the country. And um, this, I was staying in this room, and uh, middle of the night, the door opened in our bedroom. The, the, the bed was full of fleas, and Chrissy wouldn't even get in the bed. She just sat on the edge of the bed with her, and, and dressed. And I said, well, he's, someone's got to sleep with, with Andrew. So I, I put on my pajamas and climbed in beside him, and there was fleas biting me all night long. And I, I kind of put them on top of me to keep them away from the fleas. And um, middle of the night, the phone, the door opened, and, and this clang, 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 and this woman that had, I'd managed to figure her out by this time, and she realized that her days were numbered, and she threw the phone, and she says, telephone, America. And I'm, I'm, I'm on the floor of this room feeling for the phone, and I finally found the, the phone, and I says, hello? And it was Bob DeAndre. Hey, Brother Philip, how are you? You want to be here tonight in this room? And a telephone, and I'd forgotten all about it. And I, I, I guess that was one of the darkest nights of my life. And I was sitting there, and I and I says, "Oh, hello." And, and he asked me what I need, and I says, "Pray I can get some gas. Would be a good thing." And um, I says, "Pray I can I can get this little boy out of out of Romania." Then he prayed, and uh, I hung up the phone, and I said to Chrissy, "I said, I'll tell you what." I won't be going back there again. That was, I, 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 must have, I must have ruined myself for going to, back to Channel 22. And um, unknown to me. When I was sitting in a, in a stinky bedroom in Romania, being bitten by fleas, holding an orphan that had never, ever controlled his bladder in the orphanage, and he didn't then. I didn't know that God was talking on the other side of the world to him. And he said for the next while, I don't know how long it was, whatever you give, we're going to help Philip. And that was the miracle. And that was what let me know that what I was doing was bigger than me, was bigger than, than I, what I thought. And uh, I am here. And so it is. Because God let you obey his voice a quarter of a century ago. Has it been that long? Yes, sir, it has. Wow. Hard to believe. What are some of the miracles you read in the book? <laughs> well, I just want to say $20,000 came in yeah, that 20, you didn't 000. even know about. Oh, no. Because I remember the book, Brian said, you're going to lose your home. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to lose yeah. everything. We can't it make was, payroll. It was absolutely, yeah. it was over. I mean, I, it, was, it was completely over. It was done. And um, it's never over when God's in it. God yeah. has a way. He will make a way where there is no way. That's and right. so when David fought Goliath, and Goliath says, who is this, on, who is this, what do you think you are? And he says, who are you? And David was asking, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would dare defy the armies of the Most High God? That's and right. um, when Saul heard of it and says, what do, you, what do you think you can do when his brothers turned against him, his family turned against him? He said, the same God that delivered me then is going to deliver me now. And, and what you do is in your circumstance, you look back and say, has he ever failed you yet? And when he doesn't fail you then, he ain't going to fail you now. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, and try again. And you know, one of the miracles that stood out to me was when Chrissy was about as down as she could get. Yeah. <laughs> Very down. And you thought you were in an embassy and being treated yeah. terribly and the British got bad news, the yeah, got really bad news. That was the next day. Yeah. And <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah, that was the next day. And so, I mean, it just seemed to go from bad to worse, and Chrissy just had it, and, and you did not want to go back and tell her what had just no, happened. No. But Chrissy had an experience with God. An angel had come and put his hands on her, she was, she was big, a, strong hands on her she shoulders. She was sitting on a bench against the wall, and she was, I, 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 I mean, we, we, were just, we were about to be told it's not possible, and, and she, she's praying like this, and she's rocking, and hands came from behind her and put 
and, and came on our shoulder. Now, you know Chrissy, she doesn't imagine do know Chrissy, a dream, yeah. that kind of stuff. And it took her, oh, it's six or eight months later, we were driving down the, the road, I was in Birmingham actually. And she runs that day in, in the British Embassy. I says, yeah, she says, um, let me tell you what happened. Yeah. And out of, out of a wall came the hands of peace. So uh, when you went back know. over to her thinking, oh my goodness, this is gonna be the straw that broke the yeah. camel's back. She was, she she was, was calmer strong? than I was. Yeah. I was in a panic and thinking the end of the world has come. And she walked in and we, we, the, we, this is the British Embassy. And this woman that had told me to get out, there's no way I can help you. I walked in, and I was ready to take prisoners that day. And <laughs> I, I walked in, she said, oh, Mr. Cameron, how are you? Um, how has the little boy? And I'm thinking, wow, that's a d the last time I talked to you, you were telling me there's just no way I can help you. This can't be done. And uh, she says, yes, we can give you a temporary visa to take him out of M Romania to get to, to, to Britain. And that was how we got him here. Wow. Pretty We've crazy. only got <laughs> about a minute and a half. And there may be enough. people that don't know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> if you who are watching, they don't know <laughs> Jesus. And that's what always gets me upset. Yeah. People watching, hearing these miracles, and you don't know Christ. I just want you to know that he loves you just like he, he does. does these girls. No this guy. He loves you more than that because you don't know him. And all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, make me over anew. I want you. That's all you have to say. And he'll do it for you. I dare you to try it. These girls have all experienced it. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes, and He is ever there, ever by your side, always wanting to do the most miraculous. That's Don't right. forget that little project, 1,000, 2,000, and remember, you're the most important part of every Good Life program. God bless.